The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcasting in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast. Last night, a woman told me an astonishing story. She said that a good friend of hers in the San Francisco Bay Area had inherited an old violin from her grandfather. For years, she had kept it in her closet in its battered leather case. Then one evening during a visit, this woman, who was not a musician, showed my friend, who is a classical violinist, that aged violin, its top cracked, its bracing unglued, bridge toppled old catgut strings lying loose, warped bow with broken strands of rosined hair with split ends hanging torn from one end. It looked as though it belonged on a dusty back shelf of a cheap pawn shop. But when she looked inside of it, my friend said she caught her breath in surprise, for it was a signed... Stradivarius violin. Its authenticity subsequently confirmed by experts in the field. It was worth a fortune. Yet for years, it had been nonchalantly passed down in that family as a worthless heirloom, a piece of quaint junk, but in truth it was a priceless, irreplaceable musical work of art. Nobody had taken the time to look inside of it. And so precisely... It is with you yourself, however worthless and useless you may feel at times in your life. The truth is that you too are priceless. Take a moment to look inside, for you bear the signature of your maker. You are a son or daughter of the living God, whose living spirit dwells within your mortal mind. God loves you. You are irreplaceable and of infinite value, and God has created a good world in a good universe for your inhabitation. Dr. A. Cressy Morrison, former president of the New York Academy of Sciences, argued that it is possible to demonstrate mathematically that the universe could not have just happened, but was designed purposively by a god. He points out that the earth rotates on its axis at 1,000 miles per hour. If it rotated at only 100 miles per hour, for example, our days and nights would be 10 times as long as they are at present, and the earth would alternately burn and then freeze. Under such circumstances, vegetation could not live. Again, the sun has a surface temperature of 12,000 degrees Fahrenheit, and our earth is at the exact distance from it that it needs to be to get just enough heat, but not too much. The Earth is tilted at an angle of 23 degrees, and this enables us to have four seasons. If it were not tilted at this angle, vapors from the ocean would move north and south, piling up continents of ice. If the moon were not at the exact distance it is from the Earth, the ocean tides would inundate the land mass completely twice every day. If the ocean were just a few feet deeper than it is, the carbon dioxide and oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere would be completely absorbed and no vegetable life could exist on Earth. If the Earth's atmosphere were just a little thinner, many of the meteors, which are now burned out in space, would bombard us, setting great fires everywhere. Did this delicate balance of cosmology and nature just happen? Not by one chance in ten million, says Dr. A. Cressy Morrison, former president of the New York Academy of Science. This universe was created by a good God who has a good will for the living of your life. And the God who organized this very universe can organize your life, your days, your weeks, your months, and your years, and give you joy inexpressible in the living of your life. But God is not a formula. God is your Father. God is not merely a computer for getting your prayers answered. God is the answer. God is the one who knows what is the very best for you. If God said yes to every one of your prayers, you would become like a spoiled child for your own good. God sometimes says no. At other times, God answers your prayer with the admonition to wait. It is written, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. But let not your faith 
create arrogance. In ancient days, when a Roman general marched in triumph into the city of Rome, which was the highest distinction which was possible, he had two slaves with him in the chariot. One held over his head the gold wreath of victory. Thus the conquering hero was acclaimed. But the other slave, lest the victor should become arrogant, stood beside the general and kept repeating this whispered statement into his ear. Remember, thou art mortal. Amid all your successes and your victories, ever remain humble before God. Give God the glory, and you shall have everlasting joy in the living of your life. For unless your moments are filled with faith, your years will be fraught with fear. Unless your steps are taken with assurance, your journeys will be troubled with anxiety. Unless your days are undergirded by devotion, your life will be undermined by doubt. Have faith in God. God loves you and has a wonderful will for the living of your life. And live your life in love for God and for others. The two great commandments are you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul, your mind and strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man. I read just recently about a small girl who boldly walked up to a great concert pianist just as he was leaving the concert hall where he had given a brilliant performance. The little girl said, may I have your autograph? No, my dear, he answered rather with a curt tone in his voice. He said, my hands are extremely tired from playing the piano in this concert. The little girl said, well, my hands are tired too. She said, my hands are tired from applauding you. And she got her autograph. If you will appreciate people, and if you'll show your love for people, they will respond positively toward you. Love God and love others. That is the secret of life. Those are the two great commandments. Did you ever ask yourself, what would this world be like if everyone in this world were just like you are? What would this world be like if everybody on this planet were and behaved the way you behave? The Irish have an old proverb, money will buy you a fine dog, but only love will make him wag his tail. Love is the secret of great living and joyous living. There's an old poem, Faith came singing into my room, and other guests took flight. Fear and anxiety, grief and gloom sped out into the night. I wondered that such peace could be, but Faith said gently, Don't you see, they really cannot live with me. Faith in God can grant you freedom from fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. Live in faith and hope and love. George Washington Carver, the great black scientist, who achieved wonders with the humble peanut in the chemistry, and the botany of the peanut, used to tell this story. When I was young, he said, I went out and I prayed to God. I said, God, tell me, if you will, the mystery of the universe. I crave, I long, I desire to know the mystery of the universe. And Dr. Carver said, but God answered me, that knowledge is reserved for me alone. So Dr. Carver said, well, then I said, God, would you just tell me then the mystery of something small, something like the peanut? And God said, well, George, that is much more nearly your size. And so he told me the mystery of the peanut. Seek daily for the will and the wisdom of God in your life. Wherever your life may be, whatever your problems, your vicissitudes, your vexations, the difficulties lying before you to solve, and God will give you transformative power, inspiration, and wisdom. With God, all things are possible. Said Jesus, have faith just as a grain of mustard seed, a tiny bit of faith, and you will be able to say to this mountain, be removed, and it shall be removed. Have faith in God and live your life in love, in hope, and above all, in faith. I was just reading this morning before I came to this broadcasting microphone about a young boy who lived in the state of Ohio. And under his picture in the high school yearbook, there was this sentence, quote, He thinks, he acts, and it's done. Well, this boy was especially good in two subjects, science and mathematics. And in the spring of his senior year of high school, he stopped by to visit his physics and chemistry teacher, a man named Mr. Kreitz, C-R-I-T-E-S. When it came time for him to go home, Mr. and Mrs. Kreitz walked this high school lad to the front door 
and there was a giant silvery moon beaming down on the three of them as they stood there. Before you go, his teacher, Mr. Kreitz, said, would you tell my wife and me, as you look ahead to your life, what it is you plan to do with your future? This high school senior smiled, and he pointed up, and he said, see that moon up there? He said, someday I'd like to visit the man in the moon who's supposed to live up there. Mr. and Mrs. Kreitz stood there in the Ohio moonlight and looked at each other, amused and barely able to conceal their amusement, because after all, the year was 1946, and no one was seriously talking at that time about anybody going to the moon, except in science fiction. Do you know it was only 23 years later, in 1969, that the whole world was astonished because that very same boy whose name was Neil Armstrong was watched by multiplied millions of men and women around the world as he stepped out and walked upon the lunar surface, the very first man in history to walk upon the moon. His boyhood dream had come true, and people were not laughing at him anymore, for his dream had come true. And you yourself may likewise be surrounded by people who laugh at your hopes and doubt your dreams, but dare to persist and refuse to give up. Whatever your problem may be, be it illness, be it financial difficulty, educational problems, or some genetic defect, whatever it may be. Remember, with God, all things are possible. And dare to dream your dream and live your life in faith and hope and love as the son or daughter of God you were born to be, and in truth and in fact, you really are. And let this new sunrise of faith burst upon your consciousness now as you're listening to this worldwide broadcast or hearing it by transcription or tape recording Dare to believe in this moment the things that I've just been saying, and all things will begin to be transformed for you from the inside out, beginning right here, right now, this very moment. And then write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. I've written things on finding God, growing spiritually, seven principles of prayer, the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man, life after death. All of this, yours free, no cost, charge, or obligation when you write to Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell that address, Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-E. U R S T, California, C A L I F O R N I A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non sectarian, non profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day.